A lot of you have been asking me questions in the comment section under my different videos and I have been answering all those questions. But a lot of times I come across questions that I don't know the answer to. I have to do some research myself or just try my guess in SOLIDWORKS then write the answer for you. Recently I realized I could refer to ChatGPT for a lot of technical questions, not modeling or directly SOLIDWORKS related questions but settings questions, you know, how to do this, how to do that. I would just type your question in ChatGPT, get the answer copy the answer and paste it for you and i realized why am i doing this why are you doing this you're asking me i'm asking that that is giving me answer i'm giving it to you why don't you directly ask that and cut me from the loop and speed up your process i know i know this removes me from the equation i'm shooting myself in the foot you might say but i don't really care about that all i want to do with my channel is to give you value if this is a value which i think it is i want to give it to you because that is what i'm trying to be all about to solve your problems not to keep myself in the loop and slow down your process no that is not the way i do things in this video i'm going to show you a couple of examples of what kind of questions you can ask ChatGPT and when you should go there what happens if you get stuck because i did some try runs and ChatGPT gets some questions wrong too so you cannot rely 100 percent to that in those cases you can come back to me and i'm more than happy to help you out so let's go to my screen i have prepared a couple of questions i will show you what you can and can not do with ChatGPT, and I hope by the end of this video, I'm giving you something that you can work with and save a lot of time. So don't go anywhere, stay tuned. Okay, we are now in ChatGPT and right off the bat, let me tell you the difference between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. What you get in the free account is the 3.5 and GPT 4 costs around $20 a month or so. so. Not many people have that, but you definitely have 3.5. For that, I'm going to start with 3.5 and then I will show you the GPT 4 and compare them in case you want to go for the premium version because the GPT 4 has a reasoning of 5 out of 5, two and a half times more reasonable and concise than GPT 3.5. The advantage to 3.5 is that it's two and a half times faster in generating responses, but the responses are slightly lower quality. Now let's see what we get, okay? I have seen wrong answers here too, which I will show you. Okay, the first question I have prepared is this. What is the shortcut to hide a component in SOLIDWORKS? We know the answer is the tab key, but let's just ask GPT 3.5. In SOLIDWORKS, you can hide a component by using the shortcut key control plus shift plus H. What? I don't think it's right. I, I'm going to try this, but 99.99% .99 this is random and it's not right. This will toggle the visibility of selected components. All right, uh, control, shift, and H. Let's see if this is actually working. And it says it's for hiding or showing in the graphics area. So it's telling me it does both. We know hiding is tab, showing is shift plus tab. So I don't think we are getting a good answer here. Okay, so control, shift and h does nothing okay this is not a correct answer the correct answer is tap it hides the component like this and shift plus tap brings it back i assume sometimes you do have to ask me your questions if chat gpt just does things like this but let me just try this question on gpt4 and see if we get a better answer on gpt4 Yep. so you get the right answer on gpt4 you press the tab key and shift and tab are already here you can bring it back so this is one thing that chat gpt 3.5 cannot do for you let's just try another thing how can i convert the solidworks drawing to dxf file also notice the type of questions i'm asking i'm not saying oh i'm doing a loft but it doesn't work what am i doing wrong it cannot answer you because it cannot see what you're doing wrong it's a case dependent question and you have to be able to ask more generic questions if you want true answers so I asked how I can convert a SOLIDWORKS drawing to DXF file. It's telling me open the SOLIDWORKS drawing file that you want to convert, go to file, save as, save as copy either. In the save type form, choose DXF. Yeah, that's the way you to do it. Even 3.5 got it right, so I assume that GPT-4 get it right too. Before we continue, I wanted to tell you that this video is sponsored by SOLIDWORKS. Unleash the power of cloud with the 3D Experience platform, a secure turnkey solution that connects your people, ideas, and data in real time get rid of costly it overhead and benefit from cat aware design data management and collaboration tools that are accessible scalable and intuitive you can open
open the SolarWorks platform on your browser like Chrome across multiple devices from anywhere in the world and access your files and keep working on it. You can collaborate with your colleagues from different remote locations, work on one single project and create one output. This platform is super capable and it can do things that you have not been exposed to before in SolarWorks. For example, the 3D Sculptor tool that I have been covering for the past couple of times. So I highly recommend you to just go in the link below or solidworks.com slash cloud and check out what they are offering you. Do not underestimate this. This is pure value. And if you can be the first person in your company that brings it up in a meeting to your supervisor, head of department, or your boss, this can be good for your career too, because it definitely adds value to the company you're working for. You can get one or two licenses and you can speed up the processes that your team is working on by 2x, 3x, or 5x in different areas of modeling, whether it's sheet metal, documentation management, whether it's surface modeling, drawing, anything. It can do all of that. And I think you will appreciate checking that out. So go to solidworks.com slash cloud. With 3D experience, your innovative ideas can come to life anywhere, anytime. Step into the future of design with the SolidWorks cloud offer. Back to the video. The other day, I asked the very first question, what is the shortcut to hide a component in SolidWorks? And I got a weird answer. Both of them, 3.5 and 4, gave me the answer, it's the S key on the keyboard. I'm gonna ask ChatGBD. Let's see what 3.5 gives us. S key as a shortcut to hide and show components. That's not right. Wait, what? It was not supposed to go down like this. S gives you the shortcut box. No, guys, oh, Jesus. Turn off events. Okay, okay, stop generating. Let's just ask GPT-4 that. This is GPT-4, okay. What? What are you talking about? All right, so in a lot of cases, maybe it's good for me. I'm not putting myself completely out of business. I'm not saying you should go to ChatGPT and get all your questions answered. I'm saying if you want to try to get a quick answer, try ChatGPT. If the answer was garbage, then put it as a comment. You know, I read and answer every single question. This is what I have been doing since 2011. But sometimes it takes a little bit longer, especially recently that I'm very busy with my SolidWorks Course Pro, which by the way, reminds me, if you are serious about learning SolidWorks, there is no better course out there period link in the description below solidworkstutorials.net or solidworkscoursepro.com either go there you will see what it's all about you will see everything that is inside the course you have free stuff to get free mini course free webinar pdfs to download everything is there for you to go check it out i have made it to help you just like what i'm doing right now go ahead check it out and i'm sure a lot of you will join me inside the course and you will appreciate this this is my rating by the way Anyways, thank you very much for watching. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, you should do so because I'm in the middle of shifting my focus from purely teaching SolidWorks to implying SolidWorks to real life. For example, doing 3D printing. I'm in the middle of a project, a Frisbee launcher that I'm building and I'm waiting for a lot of components to arrive. And you will love to see how you can put the knowledge you gain from SolidWorks into action and build something out of it. It doesn't have to stay in your head. It doesn't have to stay in your computer inside SolidWorks. It can be a product on your desk that you can do a lot of things with. You can sell it, you can patent it, you can do play with, just use it as a decorative thing. But what you have inside your mind can become real if you follow the steps. So go ahead, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.